do right here is go back. Way back. Back at the time. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. Celebrating 20 years of New England Championship Wrestling. This is the Regeneration Podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Sheldon Goldberg, Joe Matarazzo, and Kevin Castro. Welcome everyone to another week of the NECW Regeneration Podcast. Sheldon Goldberg here, as always, along with Joe Matarazzo. Hey, guys. And Kevin Castro. What up? And joining us this week, once again, NECW producer, director, camera yeah. person, Bon Vivant and Man About Town, Anthony Moschella is back. How you doing, Anthony? Awesome. How's everybody doing? All right. Well, this week, right on. Real good. This week on the show, we're going to talk about modern wrestling. And last week, we were talking about the history of NECW and television. And we talked about, specifically, amongst other topics, uh, the new pro wrestling channel that Pluto TV just launched. There's a lot of interesting content on there. Pluto TV, of course, is a free service. Uh, You can download it. It's got hundreds of channels, all sorts of content. Uh, There's an Impact Wrestling channel, which has 24 hours a day of Impact Wrestling. There is a Triple A channel, which is 24 hours a day of all lucha wrestling and they just launched this pro wrestling channel which has a variety of content much of which comes from independent wrestling tv uh groups like beyond wrestling their women's group women's wrestling revolution defy wrestling there's uh the extreme legends collection of stuff which is the old icw tapes that we talked about that were also available on 2b tv that's on there uh they've got some really good documentaries Uh, particularly a series called Wrestler Days, which is a a series of um, documentaries profiling West Coast wrestlers like Jungle Boy, Peter Avalon, and folks like that. That was excellent. And uh, Steve Austin's Broken Skull Challenge, that's on there. Uh, Some other documentaries as well. So there's a lot of interesting content. And we had talked in the past about Beyond Wrestling and my dislike and disdain for Beyond Wrestling. And while I, I wouldn't say that uh, my opinion has totally changed, it, my opinion has evolved uh, on that company just based on the stuff that I've watched. And I don't know if you guys have watched that channel at all. Have, have any of you watched that? I have not yet. I have. Yeah, I have, I have not either, but it's definitely something that I'm probably going to dig my heels into short, sooner than later. Right. I, I don't know how familiar you guys are with Beyond Wrestling. They're a local company that uh, uh, has made a lot of noise in recent years. Uh, they also have an all-women's brand called uh, Women's Wrestling Revolution. And I, I've seen quite a bit of this. Now, I've got to tell you, the reasons that I, I don't care for Beyond Wrestling, I, I will detail for you right here and right now because... Uh, a lot of this stems from business dealings that we've had with them directly and indirectly. A number of years ago, we ran a building in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, the Knights of Columbus in Bridgewater. And Beyond was running the same building at the same time. On one of their shows, they actually put a guy through a wall, broke the wall, and that was the end of wrestling in that building permanently. They've had a history of serious injuries on some of their shows. I know there was an incident involving a a kid back then who I I think either fractured his skull or broke his neck. There was an incident with Anthony Stone, a.k.a. Nick Amaral, a number of years ago where he was involved in a match in the ECW arena with a guy named Rex Lawless. And Lawless did a double stomp off the top and basically caved the kid's chest in. Hmm. Um, And he was hospitalized for quite some time. And then there was another incident. Before we did our women's tournament, the Iron Maiden, they had a match that they had released on YouTube for free between Solo Darling, who was in that tournament for us, and Mistress Belmont. They did something in that match that is an old promoter trick that's as old as the hills, 
what they did was they basically were telling people that Mistress Belmont, who has been Triple W champion multiple times, been around for quite a number of years, was basically not a national name. She really hadn't done anything. Solo Darling was somebody who was, you know, had made some noise in the national scene. And they were basically burying Mistress Belmont because she wasn't a, quote, national name, unquote. And I found that to be completely unnecessary. Even though Belmont happened to have won the match, the damage was done. Basically, and, and the guy that used to do this all the time was Gabe Sapolsky. Whether it was with Ring of Honor or whether it was with Dragon Gate or Evolve or any of those, they, they would get local talent. Many times they would ask them to sell tickets and tell them that they were getting a tryout, that this was a big opportunity for them to go sell tickets to all your friends so they can pad their house. And they would be basically used as cannon fodder for their names and just be jobbed out. So basically what they're saying in effect is that the local talent really can't hold a candle to them. And don't bother to go see them. Just wait till we come back to town and come and see us. I find that to be disgusting and unnecessary. Especially because if you're going to use people, if you're going to rely on talent, you've got to be able to cultivate talent and make them look good. Even if you're even if you're not putting them over. I mean, if you're telling somebody that they're not worth anything, then who did you beat? Right. I mean, I just find those kinds of tactics to be disgusting. And that's my heat with Beyond Wrestling. Uh, I've watched their stuff. I will tell you that some of it is quite good. I, I found some of their matches to be very, very good. But a lot of it is what modern wrestling has become today, which is no angles, no programs, just match, match, match. The Beyond product as video is poorly produced. No graphics, poorly lit. A lot of these shows take place in nightclubs with fans standing right up to the ring apron, which I'm surprised there hasn't been reports of any sort of an incident up, up until this point. And some people think that's cool. You know, it's a cool atmosphere to have everybody standing around and you know, it's a nightclub, there's drinking going on and so forth. So there's people that think that that's a, a cool, hip atmosphere. Of course, some of us who think in different terms think, you know, what could go wrong? Well, there's a lot that could go wrong. I was afraid in the women's matches, uh, you know, what if a girl falls out of the ring and it's surrounded by guys? I mean, anybody can reach down and grab somebody and whatnot. I'm surprised there hasn't been any sort of a report of any kind of an incident like that. Not that I'm trying to encourage it, mind you, but I'm just surprised that, uh, you know, there hasn't been any sort of an incident like that. But the production values are very poor. Uh, they do produce a lot of content. It's basically uh, a house show production. And while they are successful, there's no denying that, and there's a reason that they're successful, I thought the women's product was actually very, very good. They use top girls from all over the place. They spend a lot of money bringing in top talent. But again, it's what a lot of modern wrestling has become, which is match, 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 no angles, no programs, no psychology. And that's become sort of a trend. And, and you know, it's not my cup of tea, but, you know, there, there's good in it and there's not so good in it. I don't know if you guys have watched anything like this stuff or have any opinion on it but that's my opinion sounds like raw underground we saw how well that did yeah i mean i've checked it out um the thing is is this is, um my big thing with it that i do like is that it's kind of a variety pack of wrestling you're not getting one type of wrestling the whole show you're gonna get a get a little bit of a sampling of this that and the other thing and but I agree. I mean, there's things I don't like. It's definitely very sloppy. It's definitely... I don't like the fans, like, around the ring. That's mm -hmm. that's a bit much, too. I mean, I know a lot of people that work for them. I think that the... I think that it could be really good-looking, but they don't want to invest in the time, the effort, or that. They just want to shoot it, upload it, and that's pretty much it. But... Right. 
in their defense, that's how a lot of the uh, content's consumed nowadays. Right. Uh, you know, days of post production and making it, you know, fire. You know, people mm. don't necessarily want that anymore. They just want it Im- immediately. It's just that instant gratification right. that seems to be very, very prominent, and especially in the uh, modern wrestling. There's no payoff. It's, you know what mm. I mean? They, you get your match, and that's it. You know, it's one and done. Right. Uh, on the flip side, also on that Pluto TV channel, is Defy Wrestling, which is actually very good. Their production values are excellent. They've got a great building that they run in, in the Pacific Northwest. Graphics are good. Commentary's great. Drew Cordero is a horrible announcer. The commentary's awful. It's very self-serving, very annoying. So that's my heat with Beyond Wrestling, and I, I'll tell you the truth. I think that's a great channel, that Pluto TV thing. It's a, it's a great channel. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff on there. Um, I, I'll give it its props. Um, like I say, Defy, go out of your way to see that. That's really good stuff. The Extreme Legend stuff, the uh, ICW, whatever, that that's pretty good. So there's some gems there. there there's some definitely good stuff. But, you know, there's trends in modern wrestling. This trend to kind of... It's kind of like what I like to call wrestling shorthand. Everything is quick, fast, lots of spots and whatever. Not enough time for people to absorb what's going on. Less of an emphasis on psychology and more an emphasis on crash, bang, boom. And we talked about this last week with AEW, how... In AEW, uh, you miss really the big fight feel that you don't get from wrestling today. Right. Yeah, no, I can agree whole, wholeheartedly to that. And like I said, I think a lot of it has to do with the modern wrestling fan base. You know, everything is such just quick consumption and then right. quick forgetting. You know, that right. it's gone. <laughs> and we're conditioning people that wrestling is about high spots. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I mean. You get to a point where, you know, we got to you, you obviously once you once you do a spot like that, you have to, mm. you know, up it. And then you get to a point where what are you going to do to up it? You're going to end up, you know, mm. you're going to end up probably really hurting somebody in the ring trying to do something that's, you know, right. one up from the last thing you did. Cuz God forbid you do the same thing again. Right. Cuz then you <laughs> right. The three people on the internet will come on and be like, "Oh, this guy's boring. He does the same moves." And that's the other thing is they let the they let the fans online dictate what they do with their character, what they do with their matches, and what they do with just their wrestling in general. Well, a lot of how wrestling's changed is the the fact that you know we don't have territories anymore. We don't have guys that wrestle night after night. You know, everybody's a weekend warrior for the most part, even in the big companies. They're not wrestling as much. Because you know, if you have to wrestle night after night, five nights a week, six nights a week, you're not going to go 100 miles an hour every single night. Your body just won't be able to do it. You're going to have to slow down just for self-preservation, if nothing else. Right. You know, there's that. The other thing, too, is we've lost a generation of journeyman wrestlers. Mm-hmm. That taught guys the right way. I was really just going to say that. Now, that whole idea of learning from your peers, you know, getting in the business and, and, and learning by working night after night with good veterans, and, and you know, that's gone. That's been gone for quite a number of years. You know, I think locally, one of the things that I think really has affected wrestling around here in a negative way is once Walter Kowalski passed away, all the guys that came after that were trained by disciples of his or whoever came after him, whether they worked with Walter or they didn't, uh, it's like uh, making a dub of a tape. It's just one generation less quality. You know, Kowalski right. was one of the greatest of all time. He wrestled all over the world, everywhere, uh, for everyone. It was one of the all-time greats. Who do they have to take his place? Mike Hollow? Nothing against Mike Hollow, who I like, but Mike Hollow was never a pro wrestler. Right. Never a working pro. Brian Fury. Brian Fury was never anybody who had, had a substantial career. I'm not saying he was a terrible trainer. 
even though he I was involved in a scandal, but... I think he could have, but he was his own worst enemy. Well, maybe so. But the point is that the guys who are training people are not guys who have made it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I feel like I said, there is some some trainers out there that didn't necessarily make it. Right. That know what they're talking about. They just got either, you know, the shit end of the stick or it was just a matter of timing. But yeah, as a whole, I agree 100% on that. If, if you haven't been to the dance, why are you telling anybody about it? I don't want people to listen to this and think that we hate modern wrestling and we hate wrestling today and it no, was better in our day or whatever. No. I, I think a lot of the guys are great athletes. A lot of the guys are maybe better athletes than, than the guys yeah. back in the more, day. At least more rounded in in certain aspects. Right. You know what I mean? It's just the psychology is different. The the, right. the way a match is laid out is just different mm. than it was. Mm. Yep. And I think that's more what we're trying to do is just explain the differences from what it was to what it is. Right. I mean, all businesses evolve. All sports evolve. They have to. They have to. Styles change. Times change. Right. You know, Look at hockey. tastes well, change. Hockey's no longer, right. no longer punching each other. There's no more fights like they used to be. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no more, you know, blood spilled all over the place. You know, it's a faster-paced game. Mm. And so and they had to get better, and they're much better athletes, are better skaters. They're better. They're not as they're, 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 I can't say they're not as tough, but they're not as as physical as they used to be. I'd say there's um, a lot of personality. Yeah, and they're just technical wizards now. Correct. A lot more technicality involved. Mm -hmm. Yep, the game has been revolutionized that way, and wrestling's no different. Yeah, it is definitely a different sport, but I think you can do a lot of what they're doing right now if they put the psychology in. It would give a whole different. It would be at a different level uh, with the athleticism that they have now. You only had a few guys that could do what some of these guys are doing right now. Guys like Jimmy Snuka, guys like Bob Backlund, and, and go back even further with um, Luthez and and those guys. They were legit. These guys were athletes. These guys are the Briscoes, you know. They were the I'm talking Jack and Jerry. Right. You know, these guys were were um, you know uh, uh, star athletes. Um, they, they were they were top. They were Olympic level athletes. They were right, yeah. exactly. And then look at all the all the football players, all the guys that came through. Just go to West sure. Texas. Just West Texas State alone. It's right. a it's a Hall of Fame. You know, people. These guys were incredible athletes. Well, well, don't, and they don't use forget, the psychology of that. Don't don't forget in the sixties and seventies, if you were a pro football player or a pro baseball player, you made next to nothing. Right. Football players didn't make a lot of money back in the sixties. Nope. Nope. I, I think I may have mentioned this on a on an earlier episode, but you know, I met Ernie Ladd years ago. And was talking to yeah. him one time and how Ernie Ladd was an all-pro for the Kansas City Chiefs. Ernie Ladd made much more money in pro wrestling than he ever made in pro football. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah. You know, if you were an Olympic wrestler, a Danny Hodge or whatever, what did you do when your Olympic career was over? Right. You know, pro wrestling... So life insurance. Yeah, exactly. Pro wrestling was a way for those guys to continue on in athletics. You know, Wilbur Snyder was a was a great amateur. Vern Gagne was an yeah. Olympic-level wrestler. Uh, you know, these guys get into pro wrestling because they could make a lot of money at it. The Iron Sheik. Iron Sheik, absolutely. You know, you, you look at Brock Lesnar. I mean, Angle. In, those days, Angle. In, in those days, pro wrestling recruited the best athletes in the world. How many great athletes did Vern Gagne recruit? Oh, <laughs> all, all of them. Yeah. All of them, yeah. yeah. Good call. Yeah. Good call. Bob Backlund. Ric Flair. Ric Flair. I mean, these guys were machines. They were, they were prodigies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Bill Watts was a college football star. Went into pro wrestling because there's a lot more money in it. Bill Watts is a friggin' Superman in his era. <laughs> Sam Martino. There's guys today who are great athletes. No question. But, you know, I, I hearken back to what The Undertaker was saying, you know, in an interview not very long ago, saying that the, today's guys are a lot softer than the guys in the old days. And he's got a point. But, you know, there are, nonetheless, 
a lot of the guys today are great athletes. They're just great athletes in a different way. Right. You know, the, the world and the business that they're involved in has changed and evolved to a large degree. And well, some for like the better and some not so much for the better, but go ahead. It's like anything. I can see exactly what he means. I mean, just society alone is softer than it used to be. Sure. There's no struggle anymore the way it used to be. You know, you can we can blame millennials. We can talk about whatever you want. You know, the gimme gimme generation you know i mean these guys are walking in and they're getting you know these these six-figure contracts before they walk in without paying any dues but mm -hmm. there's no territories to pay your dues like it used to be that's right. so it's it is a different it's a different genre you know you're talking about undertaker sitting around for how many months did he sit around for before he got he finally got grabbed and got put in the ring mm -hmm. sitting at world class eight yeah. months nine months mm -hmm. or whatever it is just to go yeah. and just sit there and wait Right. Yeah, and it, it, do you think anybody would wait eight or nine minutes right now? Sure. But anybody, you know, yeah. if, they, if someone didn't talk to them, they'd be like, "I'm out of here." They, they, they don't get it, mm -hmm. and and I think that's exactly what he was getting at. And he got a lot of shit for it. I don't but... think he means specifically. I think he means like as a whole package. I think he definitely means that there's a mental f toughness. I think that there's a physical toughness, and that that's what he's he's saying. It, I don't think it's necessarily that it's just like a strength thing or anything. I think there's no. a lot. Of you know, back in the day, if you wanted to break into wrestling, you know, you you went and found somebody that would train you, like the Anderson brothers. I mean, Al Snow tells a story about how he Gene Anderson beat the holy hell out of him. If you came back the next day, maybe they'd train you. Right. Most of the time, you pay him a, a, a tryout fee of a few hundred bucks, which was big money in the 70s. You get your ass handed to you. They put you through puke drills till you just about passed out. And they just take your money and have fun. Eddie Graham was notorious for tryouts. You'd have Bob Roop or Hiro Matsuda take a guy who wanted to be a wrestler and stretch him a dozen ways from Sunday. I mean, but that's also how they tell whether or not your heart's in it, you know? Because some that's people, right. they'll get beat They'll turn right around right. and the end of it. You well, know? back in those days, you know, they, they protecting the business was everything. Oh, yeah. They felt their livelihoods depended on it, and they wouldn't let just anybody in the wrestling business. Well, it did depend on it. Yeah, it did. Kayfabe was huge. Absolutely. Yeah. So you couldn't you couldn't let just anybody in. No, you not at all. And you know, Eddie Graham used to say that, uh, you know, if, if if you got into a fight outside of the ring. You had to. You didn't just have to win the fight. You'd have to maim the guy, or yeah, hurt right. him, so that when they went to the, oh, I got into a fight with a pro wrestler. Holy shit! I was in the hospital for a week or whatever. That's what they. Eddie Graham didn't care if you got into trouble with the law. He'd cover the lawyers. Yeah. But if you lost a fight, forget it. You were done. You're done. <laughs> you were drummed out of the core. Yep. Today we live in such a, a, a PC litigious society that none of that would happen. No. Yeah. Well, we do have a bonus match, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. This week's bonus match took place on February 16th of 2008. It was for the NECW Tag Team Championship. Rocket Fred Curry Jr. and <laughs> Chase Del Monte taking on the Hot Shots. The team of Bryce Andrews and Vane Valentino. So we're going to see them in action in just a moment. Uh, we'll talk about it on the other side. Rocket Fred Curry Jr., of course, third generation wrestler. Uh, the son of Flying Fred Curry, the grandson of Wild Bull Curry. Chase Del Monte, of course, now is the owner of Chaotic Wrestling. Bryce Andrews, whatever happened to Bryce Andrews? Anybody know? No, I had no idea. Get out of the business. <laughs> What's that? That's what I was going to say. I going to say, man, whatever happened to Bryce Andrews? Right. Vane Valentino's still around, right, Kevin? Who was it? Vane Valentino? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Okay. I feel well, bad if they are now. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a look at that match, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Time on this week's 
Challenge NECW TV, and we are about to crown new tag team champions. Who have managed to wheedle their way into the finals of this tournament by hook or by crook, and mostly by crook. Bryce Andrews already coveting those belts, which have been vacant since June 30th. Andrews on the mic. Somebody get that shovel and clean up that Bryce Andrews BS mess. Although he could be one half of the, of the NECW Tag Team Champions before this night is through, but they've got to get by some pretty stiff opposition in the form of their opponents. Del Monte and Curry in the finals of the Tag Team Tournament. These two felt they had something ever since they arrived as a tag team in NECW this past summer. Of course, the Rocket Fred Curry, a longtime star here in New England Championship Wrestling event. We've said this many times before. The Rocket Fred Curry, the answer to a trivia question who was in the first match ever to take place in NECW? And the answer to that would be Rocket Fred Curry and Latin Fury Luis Ortiz. After seven and a half years off and on here in NECW, Rocket Fred Curry has never held a major title here and is looking to change that situation tonight. Referee JT Franks checking. Curry and Del Monte. Somebody must have spiked Bryce Andrews' protein powder. Crowd firmly behind Curry and Del Monte in this contest that will crown new NECW Tag Team Champions. Referee JT Franks calls for the bell. Listen to the fans behind Fred Curry. Collar and elbow tie up. Valentino with the arm ringer. Bryce Andrews providing some color commentary on the outside. Valentino in control on Curry. Side headlock now by Valentino. Valentino off the ropes. Shoulder tackle sends Curry down. Curry with a leapfrog. Arm drag cinched in deep. 
and Curry in control on Vane Valentino. Curry asking, you ready, Chase? Del Monte about to be tagged in. Off the ropes. Chase waiting for him, nice arm drag. And again, Valentino getting the short end of that confrontation. Valentino showing some town here. Del Monte off the ropes. Del Monte behind him and catches him again in the arm drag. Chase Del Monte having a short stint here in New England Championship Wrestling. This time with Curry seems to have found a niche. Curry, the big shot to the jaw of Vane Valentino. Irish whip reverse, Curry over the top. And Curry catches Valentino in that deep arm drag. Curry applying the pressure. Curry tagging in Del Monte. Good teamwork displayed by Curry and Del Monte. Valentino off the ropes, atomic drop. Curry with a drop kick. Bridge is over. Del Monte gets a two count. Valentino with a shot to the bread basket and a side headlock. Andrews tags in. Del Monte drops down again. And Andrews and Valentino having their problems. Kick to the midsection by Andrews. And a kick to the temple sends Del Monte to the outside. Bryce Andrews, I think it's a about six fries short of a Happy Meal, but he's been effective right here. Sending Del Monte head first off the apron. Andrew sending Del Monte inside, choking blatantly. Fans encouraging Chase Del Monte. Delmonte fighting his way out. Oh, nice spin kick by Andrews. Andrews congratulating himself instead of covering his opponent, which he finally does and only gets two. He might have had three there, but Delmonte underneath now, and Perry just gives him a shot. No referee to count here. Valentino breaks up the pin attempt by Chase Del Monte. Valentino tagged in by Andrews. Kick to the hamstring of Chase Del Monte. Forearm uppercut sends Del Monte into the corner. Valentino firing away. Knee to the midsection. Delmonte being softened up over that middle rope. And Andrews clubs away. And Chase Delmonte. Curry now in the ring. JT Frank sending Curry out. Delmonte being pounded right here. Valentino with a cover. This could be it, but only two. head first in enemy territory. Here comes Andrews. Big shot to the rib cage. Andrews sending Del Monte face first into the buckle. 
Andrews measuring him with a right hand. Chase trying to fight his way out. Slugfest here, and Andrews cuts him off with a knee. Chase whipped to the opposite side, took the buckle hard. Andrews. Trying to cinch in what looks like a reverse chin lock right here. Andrews using a wear down hold here. To add insult to injury on Chase Delmonte. Delmonte up to his feet. Elbows to the midsection. And now it's Delmonte. Ducks the clothesline. Kick right to the jaw of Andrews. And Andrews gets a jawbreaker by Chase Delmonte. Quick thinking by Chase Delmonte. Andrews has the leg of Delmonte trying to make the tag. And does. Here comes Curry. Curry fires away. Andrews off the ropes and into a Curry drop kick. And another for Valentino. Seconds for Andrews. Seconds for Valentino. And that trademark Curry drop kick. Cleaning house. Andrews has Curry up, but Curry nails him again. Covered by Curry. And only two. Delmonte sends Valentino to the outside. And it's Curry and Andrews in the ring. Andrews over the top. Curry has him. Delmonte upstairs. Neck breaker. And a cover by Curry. This could be it. New tag team champions. What a story, Chase Del Monte and the Rocket Fred Curry are the new NECW Tag Team Champions. A phenomenal victory for both men here. Rocket Fred Curry, a third generation wrestler capturing his first major championship in this company. And Chase Del Monte, a bright young star Finally, with a title around his waist. Curry and Del Monte, your new NECW Tag Team Champions. These two guys have worked hard for a long time. And it's a joy to see them savor this victory. Band standing and applauding, Curry and Del Monte. We've got more NECW TV to come, stay with us. Rocket Fred Curry Jr. and Chase Del Monte become the NECW Tag Team Champions in this matchup against the Hot Shots. Bryce Andrews and Vane Valentino. Joe, what'd you think about this? You remember this. I do. This was one of the first matches I was actually involved with in uh, in NECW. So this mm -hmm. is actually... I was going to let Kevin go first, but I want to go because I got some good notes here that go. I want to go with. Um, so uh, I'll tell you, it, it, what's what's awesome is I love how you, you built this up and you uh, gave the, the history of Fred and Luis Ortiz. Mm -hmm. uh, having the very first match in NECW. I actually did not realize that, and mm -hmm. I remember seeing this before, but seeing them come out, and, and I've known Fred Curry a long, long time, long before I was in NECW. So um, to see him in there with, and I'd never met Chase before, and uh, Chase was the perfect little sidekick for Fred, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. Fred definitely directed all traffic. 
what I loved about it, Bryce Andrews and Vane Valentino got some really good heat right off the bat when they came out. I loved that they got the crowd going. They knew exactly their roles to play. Mm -hmm. It was obvious. It was good. Um, it wasn't cheap. It was just, it was really good. Man, when Fred and Chase came out, the fire that they showed, and you can tell who who taught uh, Fred because just the, he used to fire up when he got in there, and and he fired up like like Rick Martell used to. Mm -hmm. He would the hands would go up in in the air, and the the he'd be the feet would go, and his feet were never on the ground anyway. They had awesome double team moves. I love the fact they kept going back to the arm drag, back to the arm drag back to the Andrew, working it, it made it mean something. they do a double-team move, and then boom, back to another, and just frustrating the heels. It was excellent. And, man, could Fred Curry throw drop kicks all day long or what? Mm. That well, kid could just, he was just unbelievable. He got more airtime than, than TWA at the time. He inherited that from his father. His father was a drop-kick expert, well-known yep. for his drop kicks. On a, on a hunt Fred. tag, guys come in. Yeah, guys would come in, and they'd, they'd usually it's it's a punch, it's a punch, it's a punch, it's a back elbow. Fred, every time he came in, just like his dad, it would be drop kick, drop kick, drop kick. The mm. the how fast he was was great. The ending was great. I love the 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 pin. Everything about it. The the uh, the fans erupted at the end when they won the the tag belts, and it was to award the new tag. This was the end of the tournament, and right. um. It was Dino. It's just an awesome match. Great, great team match um, on both sides. Freddie was one of those guys that, that he should have made it. He should have. Absolutely. He yeah. He had all the goods. I, I he think, had the lineage. He had everything. I think in, in Freddie's case, it was a mental thing. Mm -hmm. It was a confidence thing. Because when, when he you started, a lot of the guys around him were jealous of him. You know, Bob Evans. And, and they got in his head. They got in his head. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I remember having a conversation with him. you got to learn how to squash your own heat. Right. You can't let these guys, you know. We were going to we were gonna put the title on him at one point, and the night we were going to do it, he broke his arm. <laughs> Man, that sounds like an ECW story to the fullest. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, right. But no, I, I, Freddie was, was so charismatic. Oh yeah, such a great baby face, such a great athlete, good-looking kid, and I felt badly. You know, I felt badly that that he just didn't have the confidence. He just didn't have. You know, there was something that was missing. And and as I say, I, I think what was missing was between his ears, and I don't mean intelligence. I, no. I just mean that he just uh, the he guys got into his, his own head. head. Yeah. 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 I worked. I worked many, many matches when I refereed with him, and mm. when when he was spot on, he was he was picture perfect. Mm. Couldn't couldn't lose, couldn't mess up. But but he had some some. You could tell when. I mean, he, he had some big shoes to fill. Yeah. Between his grandfather and his father. Oh yeah. And 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 his father was always mm. one of his biggest fans mm. and biggest critics. There's no doubt. Um, you know, Fred is a great, great man. You know, it's nice to see Nick coming up. Uh, right. Nick Curry. His um, younger brother, yeah. Great kid. Oh, and, and uh, Fred could still be doing this if he if he uh, kept himself going. I think he'd still be doing this right now. I, I think so, too. He was in such great shape, you yeah. know. And good mind for the business, but like you said, I think he, he just couldn't get over himself. I, I agree. Nick... His younger brother is a tremendous student of old school wrestling. Oh yeah, and really a serious student of old school wrestling. Uh, and Nick's a tremendous athlete, maybe a better athlete than Freddie. And that's saying something. Yeah, I just, yeah. The only thing I wish from him is if he would just turn the the personality notch up just a bit. He'll get there. Yeah, he'll get there. Yeah, I think that's really. I think that's literally the only thing that's lacking. Otherwise, that'll, like I said, that'll come. Yeah, yeah. He just has to figure out who he is inside the ring. Exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. Let him yeah. figure. Yeah. Let him get the fundamentals and get himself down. And then all of a sudden, when that becomes second nature, that's when the personality kicks in. That's why the, the good seasoning with him. I'm, 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 I'm sad about the whole pandemic thing because he was really catching some, some, uh, some good speed going. Um, 
you know a lot of a lot of uh, reps going, and and now it's kind of backburned. And um, yeah, he was getting a lot of bookings. He was starting to get out. He there, was, you know? yeah, yeah. He'll have his be, He'll be back. He'll oh yeah, back. he's still yeah. young. Mm-hmm. He's really young. Absolutely, yeah. A but, great flashback match. I loved it. I had yeah. a ball watching that yeah. again. Yeah, I'm a big Chase Del Monte fan. That's uh, that was that was good for me. I like that because, like I said, when we got a chance to work with him again during that whole like bar wars yeah. um, <laughs> time period, mm-hmm. I felt like he uh, it wasn't the same. You know, a lot there was a lot difference, and he bumped me off the apron during a match. So you know, I mean, I gotta kind of hold <laughs> pretty good today. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Chase now is one of the the owner of of uh, Chaotic Wrestling. And, you yeah. know, his heart was really there. You know, he's a guy who probably shouldn't have taken bookings outside of Chaotic. Yep, I agree. You know, I, I always say that if you don't respect a booking, don't take it. I mean, he was working for us as a favor to George Carroll. You know, I, I never asked him to book Chase Del Monte. You know, I thought Chase had the capability of being something. Um, I love the character. Like I said, he would. the selling was great. The character was great. Yeah. But he's another yeah, guy that look. did never... But there was nothing there for him at the time. Yeah, it, it, he's a guy that just didn't... It never clicked for him. He, he never did anything in the in the business. And I, I know that uh, outside of wrestling, he had a good job. You know, he, he made good money. Uh, I want to say he worked for an oil company. I could be wrong about that, but I, I don't know. But um, he was pretty secure in his life outside of wrestling. So he's basically doing it because he loved it and not doing it because he needed it or because he really had this desire to make it big. You know, he was pretty satisfied and happy in his life and was just doing it because he loved doing it. And not that there's anything wrong with that, don't get me wrong, but uh, he's not a guy that that was going to make it as a vocation. There's something to be said for that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, good match. You know, one of those uh, one of those things where you know you got guys in the ring who all had you know all of them had you could say something good about all of them. For sure, you know, all of them were good athletes. All of them, you know, were, were guys who you know they may not have made it big, but they were good local guys. And uh, you know, in the case of, of Freddie, he's a guy who had all the potential, but for whatever reason, the, the trigger wasn't pulled. Um, but you know, this is. Uh, the great thing about local wrestling, sometimes you find these gems of guys who, who you know, would give you a great performance and would, you know, do really well for you. And, you know, they didn't have to be national stars. You know, they were your stars. You know. So, good flashback match to take a look at. Yeah, it was. Yeah. What are we 2000, watching? 2008 was the year for an ECW, too, I might add. Yeah, it was that period from 2007 to 2009. Yep. Was really really that was good. Cool. That that 3 year mm-hmm. period yeah. was really a, a great period in terms of local talent, people that we brought in. And, and you know, there were some guys underneath who uh, you know, they were decent, you know, people like TJ Richter. TJ was more entertainment than than strong athletics or whatever, but you know, He's he was a good hand one. for what he is. Mr. Monroe and Minnie Rowe and all that stuff. Yep. You know, they weren't, that was great. They, they weren't uh, what you'd call Olympians by any stretch of the imagination, but they were good personalities. <laughs> and Ryan Matthews, like we talked about. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was like I said. That was that was that time period too. Fantastic. Mm. <laughs> we had a lot of fun you know, watching him getting all worked up like that. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Probably say one of the first. Of all the talent that, you know, I really found a way to get under his skin. Hmm. <laughs> Which is always fun, you know. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, you could drive Rick to crazy, but it was a short trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think he'd agree. <laughs> so, you know what I've been watching? Lots of Pluto TV and lots of... Uh... Stuff like that. What have you guys been watching? A lot of Impact um, and uh, AEW. Really getting into yeah. what mm-hmm. they're doing now. The the cross promoting. Um, there's a lot of it. And now with uh, New Japan and their deal. As a matter of fact, I think as we're recording I, I, first, this, 
I, I think it came out today. I think they started. Uh, I think it actually went live last night because I think yeah. it was the time. Okay. Because I did have, a, I did check out some of the episodes last night before I went to bed around. I don't know the we are the wee hours of the morning. So right. I think they did up start uploading his stuff because I did watch a few matches from Wrestle Kingdom fourteen, and it looks like they put the first ten episodes as Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think so I they, got three of them before I kind of. Oh, so they've uploaded out. multiple episodes. Oh yeah, ten at, ten at a time so far. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I like the fact when they were on Access TV or what. Oh, it was great. I mean, that was, and I, you know, it sucked that they lost that deal, but. You know, it it worked out for impact. So, right. Uh, you know, so that's one of the benefits of that. But yeah, I mean, I I've definitely been uh, checking out on that. I watch a, uh, I watch a lot of the, er- I still watch a lot of the early TNA stuff, uh, mm-hmm. like the Asylum Years stuff. Right. I still watch that pretty regularly. Late WCW. I get the most out of my network subscription. Now oh, yeah. I'm glad I got. I already have Peacock, so realistically, I'm glad this is a this is a this is a, a moneyless transaction for me going ahead now. So right, excited. same here. Yeah. Yeah. So. so if you have Comcast, you're not paying for it. That's right. Correct. Or okay. or no, you're not paying for it unless you don't want any ads. Then you have to pay an additional five bucks. Right. Gotcha. But I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm so used to ads now. I've I've made it so like you know I can. That gives me time to do something else, you know. <laughs> right. In, right. The, in the mind of a multitasker, that's a, a great amount of time to work with, you know. Absolutely, you got to get that mental break in there so you can do something else. Do something else and right. not give yourself a mental break. Right. <laughs> but I do watch. I, I do watch a lot of the indie stuff. It's just, it's it's fifty fifty with me. Half of it's awesome and half of it's fucking, you know. I right. Get it. Right. I hear you. I hear you. Really fine to like in it. I guess it's just a part of me that likes to uh, likes for wrestlers to look like wrestlers. I don't well, know if that's well. Right. Yeah, that mean you know. I just want to be convinced that you're a wrestler, and not like some some guy. You know, right? Not like <laughs> the kid that, that delivered your pizza. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty sure it actually has been, but I mean, you know, what I mean, at mm. some point. But yeah, you know. But like I, I definitely stay watching that in TNA, uh, mm. New Japan. Like I said, I, I watch it all. I, I, I can't lie. I just the WWE stuff. I'm just not watching anymore. Really, I'm looking it's forward on to catching up with New Japan. Yeah, yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of it now. Yeah, coming. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of it on the other shows that we've that we're starting to see now. I, I like on Pluto watching the old Impact stuff. Mm-hmm. I like watching the the uh, AAA stuff too. Yeah, the lucha stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say I just watched Turning Point 2008 the other day. They had on mm-hmm. good stuff. Yeah, and, I mean, I, that was I, on. I, I was like, man, I hate Abyss, and then I'm watching. I'm like, man, this Abyss match is really good. That's <laughs> it. It's funny how was... how you look at this stuff now and say, Jesus, this was good. It's when you consume right. it. I'm I'm convinced a hundred percent. Yeah, that it's just all based on when you consume it because right. there's a bunch of stuff that I've looked back on and mm. fondly, and I was just like, "What was I? You know, I used to hate this. Why did I hate this?" And then, right. You know. But that's good. That gives stuff longevity. Mm. If something is only good when it's out, and you can't look back on it, mm. then mm. it's pretty much gone forever at that point. Am mm. I right? Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, what are you uh, occupying your viewing hours with? Impact, AEW. Uh, I did check out some of the stuff on Pluto. Uh, I did watch Terry Funk versus Steve Kern, which was wow, fantastic. Just seeing the way Funk moved in the ring, it, like like we when you guys were talking earlier about uh, you know people being soft. Mm. Terry Funk was a fighter. Like, when you saw him, he may not have been the biggest guy, but you knew he was going to go in there and mess somebody up. And and I almost think that it, it, it's almost like wrestling got in its own way so that, you know, at one point everybody wanted to be stone cold. Right. You know, everybody that was wrestling, they all had that head shaved and a goatee. Mm. And then all of a sudden, Daniel Bryan comes around, you look at the indies, and everybody has giant beards. And then the Wyatts come out, and then everybody has giant beards and tattoos. And now, you know, 
it, then then you got the young bucks and everyone's throwing super kicks and breaking kayfabe and trying to be cool and and it, it it's it's tough because if you go back to what worked and i know that we keep saying this and i don't want to sound like i'm you know the old guy complaining about walking to shows in the snow and my bare feet get off my lawn yeah right <laughs> but I, I think that if you try to get away from you know the attempt to go viral mm -hmm. or, or to become a gif or to try to reenact something that you've seen in a video mm -hmm. game and and sell and you know and and make what you're doing in the ring count i think that's going to bring the life back into it yeah you know if 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 you, if you look at some of the old stuff i mean a Hulk Hogan match three quarters of the match was him selling before the big comeback right you know look at ricky morton mm. you know all selling yeah sean michaels yeah you talked about terry funk no, really... you know you, you talked about terry funk i mean you watch some of these terry funk matches where you go absolutely crazy you had no idea what the hell he was going to do right if you were near yep. him, you'd run like hell yep. the sheep and that was the that was the, the original of Terry Funk, too. Yeah. I mean, these guys made you fear what they were going to do. Yep. I'll, never, I'll never forget meeting Terry Funk face-to-face -face for the first time, which is backstage at Barely Legal. Couldn't have been a nicer guy. Yep. Couldn't have been a nicer so, human yep. being. Oh, you know, it, nice it, it, to it's meet you, too. son. God right. damn. <laughs> Oh. God damn! If if you eliminate your knowledge of what the people are capable of, yeah. right, and you took Terry Funk, Stan Hansen, and Arn Anderson, mm. and put them on one side, and on the other side have, you know, Kurt Angle, Matt Riddle, and uh, I don't know. Give me another name here. Lesnar. Lesnar's still a little scary looking dude, but yeah, we'll say Lesnar, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you had to, just in a bar, try to get past. Which group are you going to try? You know? Who who are you going to bump into or or try to make through to, to get over to the bar? I'd just drop down and act dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's just... There's not one of them I'd even test. There's just no way. I'd be heading for the door. It would be like, it would be like that that classic Simpsons thing where Homer just steps back into the bushes. Yeah, <laughs> hides in the yeah. chips. Right, you yeah. can emerge from my chips now. Right. All chances of you being a hero are gone. Yep. But it's like if if you didn't know what what you know like a, like Angle or Riddle or Lesnar were capable of, mm -hmm. you know, granted, they're going to annihilate anybody that steps towards them. But Funk and Hanson and Anderson were just scary looking dudes. Fearsome yeah. guys. Riddle would be Brody. the easiest one to try to go for. Oh, just Very unpredictable looking. Yeah. yeah. Probably Anderson and that would be a mistake. Mm. I was thinking Riddle. And I'm like, this guy, right. He'll mm. twist you into a pretzel. I mean, there's... <laughs> I don't know. I'm, not still not, I'm still not sold on that Riddle thing myself. I think that's all... I think it's all hype. Mm. I think, yeah, I think What's they that? Got you all, I think he, he wants you all to believe he's that tough. He was you pretty tough watch, in the UFC. You he didn't was watch pretty, pretty fighter. tough. Eh. When I he mean, put that dude to sleep and he was snoring. Oh yeah. eh. Instantly put him to sleep. That's what I mean. I'll it tell you. A little, seemed a little too. Seemed a little too perfect. I'll tell you what. Him and Sheamus had one hell. Of, they were throwing bombs at each other, and they were really laying it in. And you know what? I he was giving it right back. I I uh, I don't think there's any question to his toughness. I think it's his gimmick that I can't mm. stand. Mm. I love watching him in the ring. He reminds me of Kevin Von Erich the way he moves around with the bare feet and everything else. Um, but man, he's stiff. Woo. Mm. Or at least snug. See, I don't know if it's so much the gimmick or what they're giving him to do. You know, it, it's... Well, let's take another stoner said, gimmick. Take take RVD. Did you believe RVD? Was it more believable? And 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 then you look at Riddle. I just don't like the way Riddle's doing it compared to the way RVD did it. 
That's mm. a good parallel. I like that, actually. Yeah. Good point. Well, the other difference, too, is they could say that RVD was a stoner back then. Right. You know, they, they, they can't say that with Riddle, and the fact that he likes to say bro, mm. that's not a gimmick. That should yeah, no. be everything that Vince you Russo say. invented that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's the that's the Russo in him. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'd like to send Vince Russo some well wishes. Like he just came out of some surgery, I believe, too. Okay. Really? Yeah, I don't think it was major. I think it was some minor shit. But he said he wasn't gonna talk about wrestling when he turned sixty, and his birthday was last week, and he's still talking about wrestling. So. Old swerve. habits are hard to break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, swerve. I mean, I, he pretty much was goaded into it by everybody else because they were like, man, you run a wrestling podcast. It's kind of like the reason why people pay money to listen to you. So you kind of can't really back away from it as easily as you thought you were going to be able mm. to. Well, <laughs> as long as we're giving shout-outs to people, let's give a shout-out to Terry Funk, who's been uh, yes. having issues with hip pain. Yeah, Poor Terry Funk. God, man, he he's been through a lot this last year. He certainly has. He certainly has. You know, there's a guy that always gave 150 yeah. percent. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. what he put his, his what he put his body through for us. Um, you gotta love him. Amen. Amen. And when you think about when he came back in the late 90s, I mean, he was. He was already done at that point. He came back as a favor and put out some of the best uh, some of the best material of his career. Yeah. There's not many people that can do that, yeah. if any. Well, I'll tell you what. Right, right now, and it's, it's funny because it's one of his protégés, but Tommy Dreamer, we, by the time this airs, we won't know. Well, we don't, we don't know yet, but by the time this airs, um, he could be Impact World Champion right now at 50 years old uh, yeah. on his 50th birthday. You know, they got a nice story that they're telling right there in Impact with him and, and Swan. And I could see them doing it. I could see him getting his shot. He never, he, he held the ECW title for, what, 15 minutes before yeah. it got swapped, swapped right off his back. Right, uh, right. He never needed the title. Nope. Um, it. But it would, be, mm. it would be a nice legacy for him. And you know what? It would be a nice transition for him to be able to take that and keep, keep Swan strong and you end up seeing Omega take out Tommy Dreamer, mm. and there's the beginning of his collection of belts. Yeah. Now, I don't know this stuff for sure, guys. Don't keep saying that I'm, I'm working for them on the side. I'm you just sure you haven't hanging out. outside the writer's room? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think, I think Impact <laughs> likes to cater to a specific type of wrestling fan. Mm. I think that they have a... I don't think that they're... They don't play by the the rules nowadays. I think they kind of have a niche, and I think they have their storylines written in a certain way. I think all of it is written and performed a certain way, and that's what gives it the edge over a lot of things because it's it is different. They never the felt it in WWE, so and they that? have a brand new show coming too. Yeah, mm. they have See, the brand new show that's coming it, on the hour before. If I was booking it, I would have Dreamer just about winning the belt, the lights go out, come back on, Raven screws him over, and then ten more years of Dreamer versus Raven. <laughs> <laughs> what if Raven now, helps him You know him what? Win? There, there definitely was a period of TNA where that would have been like the perfect storyline for them. Yep. Yes. Like, right. Why haven't we done this? But now I think they know a little bit more. I think that um, <laughs> I think that they've learned from their past mistakes. Plus, I think Rich Swan is great. I remember when he was doing the whole... They were starting to give him a push in WWE. He, uh, They had worked a, a show, house show up in Maine. And they were coming through. And this is when I was working across from Kowloon's. And uh, he had come in. And, uh, you know, we were talking for a bit. Because I had done some stuff with him on some uh, indie shows. And he actually remembered. And he was like, oh, you used to do camera. And I was just like, oh, my God, yeah. But if it, it couldn't really happen to a nicer guy. Um, I'm glad that Impact, like, uh, you know, put the trust in him. Yep, have faith in him. And that and that injury that he had to come back from just to be able to get back into yep. the ring, much yeah. less perform at the, at the ability that he's been performing at, like he mm-hmm. was before he got hurt. Mm-hmm. That was a career-threatening injury. 
Yep. So, to usually you'd, you'd change it up a little bit, and that guy is still going 100, 100 miles an hour. So, and yeah. Super humble. Super humble. Oh, yeah. No, he's um, definitely a deserving guy. It's a champion right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and no that's doubt. What I think, and that's what I think. And that's, uh, like I said, that's a lot of the things that Impact gets, <clears> is that they know who to put the belt on, and they know how to, how to use it, how long. They have that down. They just, there's other things that they don't let themselves get but yeah, out of the- I'd like to see Swan I like to see him in the chase more than I see him with the belt that's why I'd think, like to and I, th- and I think you are going to see that I think that they that's how they're going to go with it I think so but I think Tommy getting the, the belt dropping him dropping the belt to Omega and then having Swan go after Omega for his belt back I think that's the story that's going to be coming that's just me yeah I'd like mm-hmm. to see it I mean I, I definitely would not be opposed to that It'll be interesting to see. I happened to catch a little bit of Ring of Honor last night, which I hadn't seen in quite some time. I thought it was quite good. You able to find it somewhere? I was able to yeah, find it on the Stadium Channel. <laughs> on the what? Stadium Channel. Oh, yes. Which is owned yep. by Sinclair. And that's yes. also on Pluto. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. So when did you get hired by Pluto, Sheldon? I know. I tell you, it's crazy. (laughs) There's all kinds of stuff on that Pluto TV. You know what? It's funny that you say that, though, because I I use my Roku a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. Just for, I use it a lot for, like, um, Mm -hmm. screen mirroring and and casting. So I'm, I, it's, and every time I go to the home menu, it's the, the Pluto thing is, like, the second thing on my list Mm. um, on my home screen. So it's Mm -hmm. like, it's almost been like taunting me this whole time. So, oh, well, there's tons of channels on it. Yeah, and they've and got some unique like, stuff. Like for example, they have a an Adams Family channel all all 24 hours a day. Adams Family reruns. <laughs> there's a game show channel. They've got all kinds of crazy stuff there, and the movies. They've got movies on demand. They've got all kinds of stuff there. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's tons of things to watch on that. You you really, if you're a cord cutter, that's the only channel you really need yeah see that yeah i'd like i'd like to do it it's just like every time i go to do it there's something that's it's the sports that pull me back in you know right Um, there's plenty of sports on it too so yeah but they're not the sports i'm trying to see so a lot of times that's that's the problem that i run into and then it's like i'm trying to weigh the cost out like huh well if i was to do this and then it becomes like a negligible amount but i'm getting to the point where you know the two bucks instrum- incremental every month going up, you know, after you know a year or two of that, it's now it's noticeable, you know. Right. So, oh yeah. Well, Pluto's and, free, so I only you know. watch. Considering I only watch like sports, wrestling, and you know documentaries, I'm pretty much covered. Yeah. For yeah. life on that, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Did you get a chance to watch Nail in the Coffin yet, Joe? I, you know, I have not. I've been so so busy. And and every time I go to do it, I'm I'm falling asleep. So ah. I've got to get that over to Kevin so he can see it before me. Right. And then I'll just steal his notes. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, all right. I guess that's going to do it for us this week. Anthony, once again, thanks for joining us. Great to have you on. We'll do oh, it again, of course. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, pal. Yeah. Go forth and take out all kinds of wrestling online and on your Roku or on cable or whatever. Watch Pluto TV. Watch the Roku channel in New Japan. Watch Tubi TV. I guess Herb Abrams' UWF is on. Uh, Let us on, know what you're Tubi. watching out there. Yeah. Let us and know I, what you want us to watch. Absolutely. And don't forget to send us your questions. RegenerationNECW at gmail.com. And uh, we want to hear from you. So uh, and money, send, us, send us money. Well, that too. We'll do yeah. that too. Yeah. But send us your emails. We'll we'll, we'll and we start. We'll find the money. Right. <laughs> we'll start there. All right. Well, for Joe Matarazzo and Kevin Castro, Sheldon Goldberg here. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you again next week. The Regeneration Podcast is a production of New England Championship Wrestling. To send us questions, comments, or feedback. Email us at regenerationnecw at gmail.com.